Okay. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to my studio. My name's Michael Markowski, and today we are going to recreate another painting by one of the great artists and one of my favorite artists of all time. We're going to be talking about Yu Peng. And let's take a look at the work that we oh, are about to recreate right here. So this is a painting that he made in the mid-1990s um, called Actress. It's, it's perhaps a little bit different than, than most of the things that he's most famous for, which are his ink... Uh, paintings um, on paper but I love this image the minute I saw it I was like this is cool this is what I want to do so um, before I get to that <laughs> you can see there's this mound of things here on the table what is this well if you recall just the other day we did a painting by the British Indian artist Anish Kapoor and I put, let's just get an overhead view here. Um, and uh, I draped all of these pieces of fabric canvas over top of the canvas. They were wet and covered with glue. Oh. And this is, we just did this on Tuesday. And I did notice as it was drying that this canvas board was really warping a lot. Oh, it's still a little bit wet. I still feel it's still drying. So I put uh, a bunch of different clamps. You could use books or um, uh, bricks or rocks or anything to try to keep it flat. You could see I was just putting pressure on the corners to help that happen. And it de definitely has helped because just uh, the other day it was starting to really bow so which is not surprising you know these canvas boards have either you know it's generally just cardboard inside right and so when that cardboard gets wet it's going to warp just like cardboard does in the rain right anyway I just waited until the <laughs> I wanted to wait as long as possible to take care of that. I do think it looks pretty cool. Um, a lot of texture on that canvas. Uh, very cool. Anyway, uh, let's move on to today's painting. So today's painting, we are going to um, create without nearly as much texture on a 9 by 12 sized canvas and here's the template which you can download for free and I'm going to show you where you can get that right now. So here is what the template, the, the outline that I did using my iPad Pro and the Procreate app and if you want to download it for free off a Dropbox folder click the link in the description below for the Dropbox folder you're going to see the hundred or so other artworks that we've already done. Click inside here and you'll see there is the two versions of the outline. One's a JPEG, one's a PDF, and then the original image itself. I actually ex widened it a little bit. It was a little bit more narrow in the original format. Uh, it is worth mentioning that if you are really excited about Yu Peng's work and you want to do some more art um, by a Chinese artist, we did do a whole week of art by artists from China and Japan. Where was that? Oh, right up here. Um, let me see. Yeah, Wu Guangzhong, Lin Feng Mian, Li Karen, um, and Chi Bai Chi. You know, Chi Bai Chi being the the probably the, the most important of, of all of them, but they're all equally <laughs> as incredible artists. Chi Bai Chi is also the artist, the Asian artist 
with the highest selling artwork of all time, I guess, or the at auction, the, the, whose work, you know, got over a hundred million dollars at, at, at auction. Anyway, uh, let's. Uh, I just want to let you know that there's also a private Facebook page just for people like yourself. You can join the page, take a photograph of today's artwork, and upload it to the Facebook page. And this Saturday, at four o'clock Pacific time, I'm going to be going through these images and giving some feedback, constructive criticism to help help improve your painting. So I encourage you to join the Facebook group. Again, the link is in the description below. I think it's the very first thing. Join the group, take a photograph of what you're working on. Even if it's something outside of class, I would still love to see what you're up to and uh, use my professional <laughs> uh, opinion to, to help you get better. I think the more people are making art, the better world we'll uh, ultimately end up living in. That's great. So this is Paula's painting that she made just the other day for Anish Kapoor. I love it. Certainly um, is a little bit different <laughs> than this, but I did do a 2D version as well, which is what I love seeing here. That's what Paula was up to. Great. Okay. So we'll get into uh, the art of Yu Peng here in a moment, but let's. Uh, I want to start the transfer process. So I haven't had a chance to do that before today's episode. So again, I'm going to paint on a 9 by 12 sized canvas board. And I've actually, all when I get it, it's already pre-gessoed. You can buy the exact same brand that I'm using. But then I also put some gesso on it again and then sand it again. So I get a really nice, smooth surface. So let's take this down. I'm going to be fairly quick on the way that I... I uh, I transfer these lines onto the canvas because his style, Yu Ping's style, is uh, very loose. And today's episode is not about you know the a a you know the, it's not a, a classical type of approach to painting, at least in the Western world where we're we might be really really trying to get everything perfect. Uh, Yu Peng reminds me a lot of Henri Matisse, the French artist, uh, and of the you know contemporary of Picasso, of um, and in that there's a lot of like looseness in the way that he approaches the painting. So we're gonna try to go for a little bit of that. Let's um, just put that up on the screen for a few moments. So I got my carbon paper underneath here, and um, if you can't find the carbon paper at your local art supply store, there's a link in the description below for if you want to buy, uh, get it sent for directly from Amazon. I found this uh, carbon paper at my local dollar store, so maybe... Um, you'll find yours at a local dollar store, mom and pop kind of corner store. Obviously carbon paper used to be very common at one point when we used to um, use our credit cards at the cash register and they used to have that machine that went ch -ch -ch, right across your card and actually take a physical impression of your car. Um, so it's the exact same material and it's relatively inexpensive too. If you can't find it, if Amazon is out of it, then check out your local fabric store. Fabric stores often carry, let's move this down here. Fabric stores often carry carbon paper because that's how people transfer images onto fabric, you know, patterns and, and such, right? I'll show you a bunch of images of Yu Peng's work here in a moment. And why I say this is a little bit different than a lot of his other work is a lot of his other work are these watercolor lands or ink. Well, he did do watercolor, but 
but uh, often like black ink landscape images and often they're like there's a lot of detail a lot of density built up and they can be you know it's almost like a where's waldo kind of thing where trying to find the figure in the landscape can be kind of tricky you have to really look at it for a little while whereas this one it's obviously very clear as to what is the main subject of this artwork it's this woman sitting here um, in this beautiful robe having her portrait painted and so it is a little bit of a departure at least from his most well-known works it's entirely possible he did a whole bunch more of these that that I haven't been able to find but I'm just always checking here, yeah, See, I'm suspecting that some of this wouldn't come through. If you don't have the carbon paper, again, this might be an episode where you could do a lot of the eyeballing yourself and not worrying so much about getting all the lines in the exact right places here. I love the animals that he does here. And, and when we look at his work in a few moments, you'll see that his uh, landscapes are kind of populated with a lot of strange creatures. And in that sense, they remind me a lot of um, the work of Hieronymus Bosch. Okay, everything in there, not missing anything major. You know, I didn't do all the lines, and I did some of them pretty quick, so that's good. Take my tape off. I keep these, but you could also recycle them rather than throw them away. And the carbon paper, I'm going to use probably another four or five times, right? You can get a lot of use out of that carbon paper. Yeah, Let's just move a bunch of these pencils out of the way. Okay, so I am going to put a colored ground down on this painting, the typical ground that I normally do. Let's get that process started here. Okay. So I'm going to mix in a bit of water into this paint. And this is the only time I, I ever use um, water when I'm painting with acrylics. At least I try to avoid using water whenever possible. That's usually the, the biggest mistake beginner artists do is they end up using a lot of water when they're painting with acrylic, probably because they learned how to paint with watercolor, right? In, in elementary school, Often little children are given watercolor to paint with because it's very easy to clean up. It gets, you can wash it off your hands and clothes very easily. It's, you know, uh, generally not toxic. And when you use watercolor, you have to activate it with water, right? So I think a lot of people, when they switch to acrylic, they think, oh, okay, so I just got to get lots of water in my paint and that's going to make the paint nice and smooth and and it's like no no stop dipping your brush into the water all the time right water is how we clean 
the acrylic off our paintbrushes, right? So we want to try to avoid it as much as possible. The only reason I use water when I'm doing this here is just to speed up the drawing time. A, it would be probably better ultimately to use matte medium in your paint here to get a bit more of a um, more archival surface, I guess you could say. Okay, beautiful. Let's put this aside while that's sitting there drying. Let's put some paint on the palette here. I guess I gotta get my labels on here. know what colors I'm putting on. If you want to use the exact paints I'm using, there's links in the description. You don't have to use the same brand of paint that I'm using. You can use virtually any brand of paint, but I would get the same pigments that I'm using. Every brand of paint makes virtually the same colored pig or um, types of colors. They're all called something a little bit different because of course they are. They, everybody wants to... I think that's why people open up their own <laughs> uh, paint companies, because they want to be able to be... Uh, to name... come up with really clever names for all the different colors. So... Uh, um, which I think is, is very funny, but... Uh, they all... if you get... again, in, in I made a video last year where I showed it's called like Art Supply Buyer's Guide, where I show all of the 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 different paints from different paint companies that I recommend you use to get uh, to to replicate exactly what I'm doing at home. Okay. I've been putting <clears throat> eggnog into my tea instead of milk and mm, it's so good I just want to drink tons and tons of tea today so everything's still going good okay oh well, I just want to take this okay sorry there was a cloth covering one of the cameras so let's take a look at Yu Peng's uh, life here and career. Here's the oh. um, here's the work that that we're working from. So just as a quick uh, reference, it's 111 centimeters by 76 centimeters, which is pretty big, right? That's you know arm's length. So it's a, a fairly it's a pretty tall piece of paper. And uh, I don't know what it is in inches, but probably somewhere like three, three and a half feet or something, I imagine, right? Um, if we click on this link here, we can see a whole bunch. We're just going to look briefly at some of his artwork here, because I think seeing what else he's done is really, really helpful. Uh, I love these um, books that he did his calligraphy and ink drawings in. Um, so there's, you could see, you know, he, we'll talk about his biography. Maybe it's actually, uh, his biography. He was born in Taiwan in, in, uh, or sorry, in Taipei, um, and in this, in the city of Taipei. And he grew his family was sort of not the wealthiest family, but wasn't particularly poor. Um, and, you know, if you know anything about history and what was happening at the end, you know, after World War II in China and the separation uh, of Taiwan and, and China, I'm not going to get into the whole politics of it, but it was certainly a, a um, 
difficult time for for people on on both sides, right? In Taiwan, to this to this day, um, and, you know, is adamant about its independence, and China believes that Taiwan belongs to China, and um, f- you know, Yu Peng was was you know didn't he he you know he's born in 1955, so this is sort of after like as a young child he he was probably unaware of so many of these tensions but his teachers were certainly aware of it and he had a few different teachers while he was growing up who encouraged him to to follow art now he applied to art school did not get into art school but was adamant that he was determined to become an artist and like everyone in Taiwan, he had to go th- do um, compulsory military training. And when he finished his military service, he decided to take a shot at becoming a street artist and would set up an easel in the in a very, very busy part of uh, Taipei. I think I can't remember the name of it, um, but it's like the very, very busy, I think it Anyway, it'll, maybe there's something in here in one of these articles that talks about it. But he would set up his easel and paint pictures of tourists, portraits, and landscapes. And having to work really, really quickly like that while people are watching. I've done that kind of thing before. Um, that's a whole other story we can talk about. But uh, it is very, very stressful. And... but it's a great way to learn because you, you you sort of live by the sword kind of thing you know if you're if you're not doing a good job you're not gonna last very long and so he did did this for a number of years enough to so he saved up money and went on a trip to China and he actually had to go to Greece to get a visa and then went to China and when he was in China he spent time you know investigating some of the famous landscapes and places where some of the famous artists like Chi Bai Chi had gone and, and painted. And I think he was his mind was blown. All he had really seen previous to that were artworks in books and magazines. And it really inspired within him like this deep interest in Chinese history and learning about traditional landscape uh, artwork, which Obviously, is, is is arguably the greatest of all um, in the in the painting genres within Chinese culture. The landscape is is you know is really second to none in in, in terms of the world. Um, so that was something he was super focused on. What's really interesting is he 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 investigates the traditional ways of painting. He investigates like how they're done, you know, where they're done. But he has his own way of painting these landscapes that are really, really weird. And I mean, I, and I mean that in the best of ways, right? So, you know, if you were like, like, I'm just opening up a few of these here. So they're very idiosyncratic, like strange very unique he comes up with his own um kind of vernacular of mark making and these people that are in these landscapes what are they doing what is their relationship between them um it's very hard to to understand um and because there's not a lot of his work is is has been seen in the west here there's very little text that I've been able to dig up on the meaning behind any of these images so I apologize for that but my hope is you know by choosing an artist like you paying that maybe um, will spark some more interest in his work and we'll be able as as Westerners to appreciate this great artist you know so this kind of thing is you know has a lot I mean has elements of traditional Chinese landscape painting, but is also, you know, almost to the point of blasphemy. You know, it's so, you know, the the way these trees are painted is much more along the lines of, of an artist like Matisse, as I mentioned before. We'll just look at one more of these, because I just, this 
was what this was actually the work I was thinking about doing originally at first and then I thought maybe this was a little bit too difficult and there's a bit of uh, nudity in here so if you're a little bit easily offended avert your eyes for the next 10 seconds here a little nude female figure here um, but I just like the way this image is painted it's just very, very different than anything that had been done before. And um, this is an image I've seen a number of times. And when I was thinking about doing, like, who would I do an episode on? I was like, wow, Yu Peng is definitely one of my favorites. Anyway, so, but this is the image that we're going to recreate today. It's obviously much more colorful um, and much more straightforward and probably much easier for the vast majority of people who are watching today. So this looks like it's almost dry. I'm just gonna blow dry it really quickly here. Just to speed up this process. So I'm gonna mute the microphone for a moment. Good. Mm. I, I love the holidays. I love pumpkin spiced stuff, pumpkin seeds, and everything like that. So Halloween, I love it. Pumpkin pie, and then when we go into Christmas, oh, the eggnog. It's very hard for me to resist the eggnog. Okay. <laughs> um, so, how are we gonna do this painting, and how are we gonna keep the spontaneity? from the original that I think is so important to this painting. Um, really the, the two ways that I'm, the, what I'm just trying to decide at this exact moment is, do I wanna do some outlining with first and then put my red, or do I wanna put red on first and then do outlining? Now, I, I can say with absolute 100% certainty that he would have done the lines first with a darker color. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the way that we should do it just because of, of trying to, to do the painting in, it, in the, the most simple, straightforward, and efficient use of our time and materials. So I'm just thinking... Um... Maybe we... Because I, I guess one of the things that I was thinking about the, the the reason why I'm kind of having this debate is probably the fastest way to make this painting would be essentially just to paint all of the 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 background red and then paint over top of the red um, because so that way we're not having to go around these shapes but I do sort of sense that that's important here and I also, now that I'm looking at it a little bit closer, I am thinking maybe we should put another, uh, like a base color over top of this. So I think I'm gonna do that first, even before I go too much further. So I'm gonna take some white and just add in a second kind of coat to this background. Maybe let's put a bit more white. And I'm going to turn this into a bit of a brown. 
Now you could, I could have done a bit of this beforehand. So I'm taking a bit of warm red. warm yellow and warm blue mixing it together to get this, this kind of slightly off color here which I can also use as the basis of a skin tone and I'm just gonna put a little bit of water just to thin it out so that it, when So I don't cover up all my pencil lines. Okay. There's a little bit more pink and flesh tony than I was expecting. Or I mean, I knew that I was obviously that, that's what I was going to get, but um, I do still like that I've got this yellow happening underneath that's just sort of I always just feel like it just gives the painting this nice warm glow even if it's just on the sides of the painting So I think I am going to now go right to the darker color, mix a darker color. I'm going to blow dry that real quick to, to so dry. I love that. I love this surface. I love, it's very, very subtle, but that warm yellow coming through, it's, this would be, it's a, I think almost like, you could see when I hold my hand over it, like the, you could see that warm yellow coming through that color. That's great. I love that kind of thing. Now he painted this on paper. So what color was the paper he painted on? Did he paint a color like this on top of it? I have no idea. Um, you know, if we look at the painting, you know, when we get down to like, say these legs, you can see there's a bit of that warm yellow, just like it, as we painted it. So I don't know. I don't know if that was a color he put down or if it's like a white or did he paint like a, a color like this over top of it you can see underneath the face we've got this like a cool red under here which is interesting I wasn't expecting that now that I look at it closer you know it's one of the things the the simpler the painting or at least as it appears simple those are often the paintings that are the most complex because 
if there's very little on the canvas, it really has to work really well. You know, an example would be, you know, if you make a, a meal that is just using two or three ingredients, it's either hit or miss, right? You know, if you're if you're making just a steak and you put a little bit of salt and pepper on it, and that's it, well, if there's no sauces and all this other stuff on top and mashed potatoes, it better be cooked perfectly, otherwise there's nothing to disguise it, right? So that's one of the things, you know, when I look at a painting that's that's relatively straightforward like that, I'm thinking, what is it that I'm not seeing that I want to capture in this painting? Okay, so let's, I, I'm going to put, mix a dark color and we're going to use that right off the, the top here. Yeah, okay. So let's take some of this warm red. And we're going to mix it into this cool blue. And we're going to get a nice dark color. And I'm going to take some cool yellow and mix that into here as well. Now that cool yellow basically as oh well all three of those colors together but the cool yellow takes it from being a purple and moves it towards gray so we need a bit more of that and basically we just kill all the saturation now do we want to use this color just like this I think I'm, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to paint with it first, and then we might go over some of these lines with another color later on. Okay. So let's, why don't we just start zooming in? Now that I'm looking really up close at this painting, I think I am going to add, I'm going to take this color, my dark color, and mix it into this blue, my cool blue. So I'm going to make it a bit more of a really dark, cool blue green. And you'll say like, what's, oops, sorry, what's the purpose then of making this much darker color? Well, because then I can use this as essentially like a black to modify any other colors. Yeah, I like that, okay. So, the other thing I wanna do is try to be fairly loose with the way that I'm painting. Yu Peng, the way he paints is like these very fast marks. And a very bold way of, of expressing himself. Remember, this is a much bigger painting in real life. Put a bit more cool blue into that mixture. I like that even more.
We might paint over a bunch of this, so don't worry about making it perfect. I think one way I'm going to approach a number of things here is with a, a very like with a dry brush technique to apply some of the paint over top of um, you know around around these shapes etc. So he painted this. Uh, did I? Is this in watercolor? Let's just take a look here. Oil, that's right, oil on, on canvas. Of course it is, why would I even... Definitely doesn't look like watercolor. You can see just like how kind of rough I am with the way that I'm applying paint on here. You know, I, the shape of her face, I've sort of changed a little bit. We'll get that back as we go. Let's do this area up here. All those little spots I'll do separately later. That's her hand here. I love this uh, kind of cat, I'm assuming, right? It really has like a it reminds me a lot of 
of the way that like dragons are depicted in Western medieval art. Okay, so let's just take a look. We'll zoom back out. That's what we got. Going nice and quick so that I'm not overthinking things. And Okay. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add maybe a little bit of white into some of these spaces here. And just brighten a few things up. Eventually. <laughs> Great to see you there in the chat, Paula. take this same color and just add some white to it just lighten it up a tiny bit Now this, you know, ideally this would have been probably the color on my background if had I not just been racing forward to finish as quickly as possible, but that's okay. Also not concerned about that paint smudging like that. should paint this I think she, he painted that very like very very different so I'm gonna let's just get the I'm gonna now move oh, and the legs you know maybe since I'm a, a using the same color I'm just gonna keep them all the same which is sort of a, a strategy so if for instance I just, I, I didn't do the legs, but I painted the face and the hands in one particular style and then the, the legs in a different sort of approach with color, there's like a missing layer there. It might make those legs look like they're very, very different, which is not surprising because they were painted a little bit differently, right? So you, even, it's sort of like, if I've even if I've made a mistake, I'm just gonna keep on playing that song you know, when a musician skips a note, you, know, you just play the note again, and then it all makes sense later. Right? It looks like you meant to do it. Okay. I think now I'm going to paint the background red. So I'm going to just use the warm red right out of the tube. Although I think I'm going to add just a hint of white in here. That way it'll just cover up a little bit of the the color below and I'm gonna do another coat probably 
So I'm taking this, it's going to be just a little, ever so slightly tinted, slightly pinkish. But that way, later on, when we do another layer of red, it's just going to glow. Now, I'm not going to be so concerned about doing this a perfect outline. If there's gaps, that's okay. This is fun. I just, I, I love doing these different artworks and spending time with a different artist and feeling like I can get a little bit of an understanding as to how they worked and it just makes me appreciate their work so much more. You can see I'm still using a nice big brush. I haven't gone down to anything kind of small, keeping it big so that it, I stay in the high level of the of this piece. That's cool. It's going to be even harder the next time I do another pass here to stay with the same sort of speed, like trying to get that whole background painted. And that's in, you know, what, two minutes or something. It's not easy to allow yourself to uh, leave little bits unpainted. Again, this that this color is not quite as intense as it will ultimately be when we get um, another coat of warm red right out of the tube. It's just gonna zing and pop. Okay. 
Now what should we do? I think I want to do a cold green. So cold blue and cold yellow together make a very, very saturated green. Almost too saturated, so we'll see how this works. If it's too bright, we can always dull it down. Again, stay moving quickly. Don't don't get bogged down. Okay. Now the question, maybe just while this is drying, I'm just gonna take a bit of white and paint back over top of this. So I'll put those flowers that are there that I missed. Now I'm looking at her clothing and trying to decide I think he painted this green to begin with all under here so I'm gonna do just that let's get maybe a bit of a bigger brush let's take I'm going to paint this in pretty quickly and and quite thin too. So you notice I didn't paint over everything. I want a little bit of um, that earlier color coming through a bit. Now what I want to do for her face, I'm going to take some of this um, cool red and pink. Maybe a bit more red. I'm going to paint this on her face. And to keep things consistent, I'm going to paint it on her hands. And legs. And I'm not, I don't care if I go over Now 
here I want a bit more of a brownish color. I wonder if I can use any of this here. Taking a bit more blue. Oh, I like this color right here for... Bit of a purple quality going on. And it's gone, gone kind of gray. Given this kind of like a bit of a dirty brown color. But as it gets it mixes with other colors, it's going gray just because it's getting dirty. Let's take some white. Maybe a little bit of, of warm blue. I'm gonna do the dog in the bottom right corner. much more yellow, isn't it? Anyway, well, that's okay. We can modify that later as well. So let's, uh, oh, I still got enough of my dark color, although I think I'm, I like this, how it turned out when I added a lot more blue to it. Because now I'm going to go over these lines, but maybe a little bit more carefully this time. <laughs> Heidi says, has anyone noticed the legs on the bottom left? The two seem to share the same legs. I can see that. They do, where it could be, yeah, this, does this belong to this bird? And does that belong to that bird? Does this also, I could see, I totally see what you mean. And it's possible that, they, that he painted those together. Like this line might be belong to the bird on the left. But as when he outlined it very quickly, just allowed them to kind of blur together. Okay, so now I've got this dark, um, cool blue again. And you know what, maybe I'm just gonna blow dry everything here real quick.
Bec um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna paint everything and I think at this point this is gonna be maybe my final outlines All right so generally we, we do this at the very very end of a painting in this case there's still gonna be more that I'm gonna do to it but I think I'm gonna do these outlines now so I want to take some time and I want to do them well although I still want to capture that level of of speed and spontaneity that Yu Peng um, did so masterfully in his work here. So Not sure what it is that's that uh, that I'm painting up here in this corner. See, I'm, I'm not going to paint over every line on here. I like that there's sort of a couple different layers underneath here. So that first layer was just to kind of get the illusion of a whole bunch of of him trying to kind of figure out the composition really is the way that I look at that. Of him probably painting those lines on as quickly as possible, trying to figure out where he wants the different things to go, and then moving on. feels pretty good. I like the way all of this is coming together. I like this bit of the cool blue in here. If anything, I could also put a bit of white in the color just to wash it out a little bit if that was important. I don't mind it like this, but I could see if, if you really wanted to get maybe in this area that kind of quality, you could do that just to get it. What he would have done if you know he's painting with oil paint is just adding a little bit of turpentine or odorless mineral spirits to the paint. I 
you, let's finish off this vase here. So, you know, I'm painting with a fairly dry brush. I don't mind this, and it seems to kind of fit conceptually with his approach. Even though he's using a oil paint, we can still get dry brush with oil paint, just as we can with acrylic or ink or any other different medium. It is, you know, one thing I, I'm noticing about this painting is how kind of like things are jumbled up next to one another. Unlike, you know, the way Matisse would have done is he would have had like lots of space in between these different shapes. A little like kind of breathing room. That's not what Yu Peng does. He allows things, there's like certain areas where there's a lot of empty space and then some areas like right in here where everything's just sort of jammed in there together. And again, I'm not saying I, I, that's not a negative. I just find that super interesting. That, like that's, you know, his the, the way that he approached the creative process and the way that he visualized spaces. And you can really see that in his landscapes where they're very dense. You just get the sense that there's a lot, like there's they're just full every part of the forest is, is just full of stuff which is is kind of different than traditional chinese landscape painting where there's often a, a sense of like lightness where things are there's lots of room to maneuver and move around as a like the i mean like the viewer's eye And I think for like Western audiences, look at, at you know the the kind of landscapes that you did versus like Wu Guangzhong or well maybe less Wu Guangzhong but Qi by Qi, his landscapes there's a lot of empty space. If you recall the the twelve landscape screens that we did months ago, based on on his. Uh, masterful paintings um, there's there's parts where the whole you know where there's large like you, you could almost say that somewhere around between 10 to 40 percent of some of those screens have backgrounds that are untouched So I may even after this is done go back and just 
go with a bit more white back over top of this. We'll see. I mean, I like the way it looks right now, but if we want to get closer to his style, we might want to... soften up some of this here and rather than adding white into my color what he's clearly done here you can see the paint white paint kind of going over top of that Here's the shared legs that Heidi was talking about. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off on the figure for right now. I'm gonna just get the background uh, elements sorted out first. So I'm just gonna keep on painting um, in and around the background, and then we'll take care of the figure at the very end. I'm just looking at the way that, in fact, I'm gonna add a bit of, I'm gonna add just a bit of glazing fluid to this color, just to thin it out a little bit. So maybe it won't be quite as opaque, it's just a little bit more transparent, which is what we see here. can't get them all so I just you just make your judgment as to which ones you f you feel that you like the most and then you paint those ones in and they might be different than the ones that I've painted in and that is okay because you don't want to be a robot I don't want to be a robot we want to make our own paintings that are um, individual and unique It's going to be hard to leave edges like that. You know, it's again, it's a little bit different than the way he did it, but I'm I'm less so trying to to make a copy of his painting than trying to embody his approach to painting. Those are some, that's a wide leg there. Okay.
So the first time I did this, I didn't quite get that curve. So now I'm putting a curve back. You know, I'm not too pleased with the way that I've done my part of the painting right here. You know, I was going quickly as I was trying to do. And, you know, when that happens, you, the, my level of accuracy goes down. That's just part of what happens when you're moving that quickly. Now, am I going to stop and try to fix it? No, I'm, I want to leave it like that. Otherwise... I'm just going to keep, I'll, I'll, this area will just get really, really muddy and overworked. And that sort of goes against the whole Yu Peng's approach here. So I'm just going to embrace it and just keep on going forward, right? love this this little creature here like this I just think it's so cool this is the kind of thing that I think would make an awesome little tattoo or something for somebody And, you know, obviously this color has got a bit more of a yellowish hue to it, whereas mine's gone a bit blue. We can easily just glaze that and get closer to the original. Mm, 
I see that my the way that I've done my tail is certainly different than the way he did his. Um, I think I'm just going to leave it like that. I think that's okay. I, I, I'm just going to take a bit of white. Now take a zoom out again. I guess we'll do the flesh tones on the figure next. Or actually, we'll do the outlines on the figure because the way that he's done this, if we just zoom in on the... It looks like he's painted the dark lines and then gone over afterwards and painted them out. That's why we get such thin, thin lines here. So we've painted this pink... And I'm going to have to reshape that face a, a little bit here, but you can see that there's this little bit of kind of that re dark red, cooler red underneath the face, or underneath the, the top layer of skin. That's why I painted that like this. Um, so, I wonder if I can get away with any of this paint that I mixed earlier. Or should I? Let's mix it again. That way, anybody watching can can follow, right? So let's start out here. I'm going to take warm yellow, warm red, mix them together to get an orange. Taking just a bit of warm blue. And that's going to turn this into a brown. Let's make it just a bit more 
warm red in here. Okay. Now, I'm gonna wipe my brush off. Take some white. And take a bit of that color here. And let's just see. It's almost like a little bit more pink still. And a bit more white. You know, I was, I was, okay, so I don't know why I'm, I was going to paint the features first before I mix that color. So I got the color right, um, but I want to do the, the, the features on her face first before I go any further. Because I'm going to be putting white all over this, I have quite a lot of freedom to. Um, oops, I'm getting paint so all over here. Um, what was I? Um, I think once I paint this, I'm going to have to um, uh, what should I call it? I'll probably do a little bit of work back on top here. So let's just take some warm red. Look at the shape of her face here. I'm gonna bring her hair back up a bit. Let's go down to the hands. Thank you. 
paint a flesh tone over top of these. I think I might, you know, do a little bit more when I got that paint on there. Now let's do these feet. Just mixing up a bit more of that's the same blue. Their foot. Oops. So the other foot gets cut off in the original, but I've still got a little bit of room down here. So because this is the left leg over top of the, or I guess technically this is the right leg over top of the left leg. So this is the inside of the right foot, and that's the inside of the left foot. Okay. So I'm going to blow dry this. Oof, okay. Maybe before I go any further, I want to 
make this green again. I'm going to take a bit of white. Just because I want to get in here. Things just got a little bit dark in here, so I'm just going to bring some of this back to brightness. I'm going to go back over with some dark lines shortly, but Let's So I'm taking cold red, warm blue, and some white. Just a little bit of that. Anywhere else that's needed? I, uh, oh, maybe a bit in here. Maybe, you know, again, sometimes I just kind of, I'm like, that's the way I want it to be, and I'm, and, uh, you know, I don't care. I'm going to put it in there. <laughs> Okay, so now this uh, area here, I think, is what I'm going to do next. Should I or should I do the hands first? Let's do the hands first because I got this paintbrush that's sitting here slowly drying up. So we mixed this color. Let's just add a little bit more white to it. Okay, I'm gonna go to a small brush. Let's do, we're gonna do the face. So I'm gonna take this kind of peachier color. kind of outline a bunch of things.
So I'm deliberately painting a bit over top of these blue lines. And then we're going to go over with some white here in a moment. But Let's do that with the hands here. These hands seem a little bit kind of pasty and yellow. Um, He says the painting looks like a collage in some ways. I think that's very perceptive, yeah. It does feel like um, everything's sort of floating around, kind of like a typical collage because there are a bunch of different things kind of just jammed into one picture. It does feel a little bit like that with this painting, that what is the, you know, like they're... Like the, the this kind of space, the logic of the space is a little bit unclear, which I think he's doing absolutely deliberately to create a kind of um, slightly uh, strange effect. I think I think he's going for. Kind of like almost slightly um, what would you say? Kind of like she's like a a heavenly kind of you know um angelic like kind of creature that is sort of floating in in this undefined space And dare I say, maybe that's why part of this foot isn't there in the way that he did he did it, because it emphasizes, it's like the she's standing on the bottom of the picture rather than her, the way that I have her foot sort of grounded 
inside the picture. So, I don't know. I could be just reading too much into it, but sometimes, you know, artists do, do things that like that deliberately. So, let's now go back. Now, I want to go back to the face. I'm going to add more white and maybe even a bit more yellow in here. Got to be careful not to go too far because it, it might not be very flattering to have, um, you know, if you have put too much yellow into a skin tone, it starts to look a little bit sickly, right? So it's almost like I think I might glaze with a bit of yellow at the very end. So I'm just adding a lot more white. Oops, sorry, it's not even on camera at all. Duh, what am I doing here? Okay. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna glaze with this, so I'm gonna take this color. And then get my mop brush out if I want to smudge anything around at all.
very delicate trying to get that line to get thinner and thinner. face for a few moments and let's just finish up these hands obviously I'm sort of approaching the hands a little bit differently right but I'm still gonna get this bit of a lighter color on top I think I'll put a few blue lines back on there afterwards. He's also really thinned this out. I don't know. Am I going to put a little thumb there? Yeah, it's interesting. I see Heidi says, uh, her face and hands are like those of Lin Feng Mian's lady, uh, the traditional Chinese beauty. Um, yeah, definitely. I was As I was painting these, I was thinking that totally reminds me of that exact same artist that we studied um, back in, when was that, May? Or <laughs> feels like a lifetime ago, but... That very delicate kind of fingers and so I'm trying. I'm trying to restrain myself from being too much down here because you can see he's left a lot of the previous layers showing through here. And it's hard to like just do a little bit and, and to not fidget. So I, I'm going to put some of those toes back in a, in a few moments. But. So I think let's do the the her clothing now. Let's get that back up. Which I'm gonna do is with using my dark 
color and uh, and some glazing fluid. You could use matte medium, I suppose. Um, so I'm going to take this dark color. Let's do this right here. I'm just going to use a slightly smaller brush. So I'm going to get that glazing fluid all over my brush. And let's get some of that darker color on there. So this is going to make that color much more transparent. We could do this as a dry brush. It just would take a, a little much longer. Okay, because what I want to do is I want to preserve some of this green underneath here. And if I just paint that dark color right over top, all that green is just going to disappear. Now this is... I need to go maybe a little bit darker, so let's just take a bit more of my dark color and mix it in well. There we go. So we could do like five layers of this and be really careful about, um, you know, it would give us a ton of control over what gets darker and what doesn't get dark. I don't think I'm going to do that many layers, so I might just sort of skip over a little bit once you sort of just see how this effect works and just go maybe do two layers maybe another one that's a little bit darker it's kind of up to you you're painting when you're working on it you can take whatever approach you want right there's no no one telling you I'm certainly not going to discourage you from uh, pursuing a, a path that you feel like going on right So obviously, well, do I want that thumb out there? I don't know. We'll see. As I'm, I'm going to go much darker around some of those areas anyway. So potentially, I'll get rid of that thumb entirely. Let's do these the legs of these chairs here. Even, you know what, I'm even going to take this and go up into the, this thing here. See, it's very subtle. Maybe do a bit here. Not everywhere, but just a bit. And heck, while, while we're doing this, I always find like what's so interesting about a glaze like this is how it affects different things differently, right? Some things like just boom, you put that, and you're like, whoa! Like when we did that, like look how it changed that re really quickly. And then there's other areas where it's like very much more subtle, where you'd almost expect it to be more intense. But you know, that's how weird painting can be sometimes, right? And the way color reacts to other color.
Maybe while that's drawing, let's go back to the red and paint that. So let's just clean that brush a bit. And I'm going to put some fresh warm red on my palette. And I think I'm going to I'm gonna well I'm gonna use a bigger brush for for some of the bigger areas and then when we get closer in I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush Wow that makes a huge difference I don't know how well it comes across on camera again I'm, I gotta be I, want, I don't want to paint over every, like I, I, I want to preserve some of those little windows into the color that we first put down there and it takes some restraint just to let that sit like that. So here's this area here. I painted that some white just to clean that up. One thing I noticed too is kind of there's these little areas in the background color, this red where it's kind of a little bit dirty, and it's, we've, which is probably because he was painting this quickly in oils and the colors are mixing. I'm just thinking out loud, but I could be convinced to um, you know take a bit of glaze and just go back like a little bit of even my the darker glaze that I was just using and just to sort of muddy up some of those areas just go around and add a little bit of that maybe I'll do that and we'll see some point here I'm going to switch over to my smaller brush Now, if you were to go and do this painting and, and do it with a little bit more precision than either myself or you did, like, I don't, that would be okay, too, right? Like, uh, it might, might make for absolutely fascinating juxtaposition between a looser style and a more sort of controlled um, approach. I would say one would be better than the other. Maybe one would have a little bit less of his sort of distinctive 
approach, but you know, I think you're invited to um, to bring your own personality to these paintings. I think that's what makes great art great is is the uniqueness that we all bring to our own artwork. Okay. So, that might be good with the red. I don't know if I would need to do any more red elsewhere in here. The only thing, if I was, you know, using... Uh, two different size brushes. I would just want to make sure that there's no kind of weird hard uh, edge here that like you know if you so that everything's integrated. So I just go around and soften up between the, the smaller brush strokes and the larger brush strokes. I need to blow dry this here, and then I think I might go for a little bit of a darker glaze. color mix that in pretty thoroughly to this glaze it's gonna get much darker so if you wanted to be slower at this you could certainly do more glazes and you'd be you'd be have a lot more control Notice how, like, when I'm testing that, I, I do it in one of the areas that I know is going to be really dark anyway. So that if it's too dark, I'm like, okay, well, it's no problem, because that's that area is supposed to be dark anyway. But, you know, this area I want to preserve is a little bit lighter. So I wouldn't test that color right out of the off the palette in that area until I, you know, I'm, I'm a little more confident that of how dark this is going to get. So now this is sort of like dry brushing over top of it. So you take this color, see if I can just glaze in her hair. That way I preserve a little bit of that color that 
is there. I think what I want to do now is is now touch up any last little things with my darker color. Actually, this darker color, and I added blue to it. That's right. to get a little bit old and I don't mind if it gets a little bit more uh, transparent as I do these kind of final little bits on the painting. hoping to do but I mean it's kind of amazing just looking at the way that he painted those eyes how much like <laughs> for me it just looks like I've got a little bit of a line and so does he but maybe I just need to put a little bit of a really dark color right in the middle maybe I'll do that afterwards I just it's I'm like wow how did he get that, like this? I think that's what it is. There's a little bit of a slightly darker, or just dark, dark right in here, but I don't have that color on my brush just yet, so I'll wait. Um, chin, side of this face, I think. be careful about putting too much something there is driving me crazy I'm just gonna move on <laughs> um out of focus is that why I don't know anyway let's go to the hands
Not sure how I feel about that just yet. I'm gonna continue moving on. I think this. I'm just gonna thin the top of her hand. So I'm kind of, I like this cool blue here, but I want to make sure it's integrated into the rest of the dress and not just an outline that's around her hands. So I'm going to bring that back into elsewhere into this. And you know, as I look at it, I see more of it, but... And this might get a little bit obliterated here as I go a little bit darker. There's almost like a hood or something on this robe of clothing. And then let's just finish off these toes.
you did such a great job with subtlety in, in the arch there that I didn't do just now, but I almost want to fix that a little. blow dry and I keep on trying and I'm like I'm gonna fix it and while it's wet then you just get in this endless tug of war with the painting well it's wet. Ugh. Ok. 
Okay, let's just take a look at this. Oh, I was gonna do, I gotta finish those lines here, don't I? Integrate that green bat better into here. get a couple of darker spots like this dark color I'm gonna mix a bit more of this dark color since I'm out. Sometimes it's like I, I'm like, oh, I don't want to mix new paint. And then I'm sitting here like with I've got paint that's just gonna go down the drain or into the on a rag into the garbage, so it's like use that paint what's on your palette. My goodness, Michael. Okay, let's darken one more time. Actually, I should. I want to blow dry all that blue.
Oops. Sorry, I was still muted. I thought I tapped the unmute, but I guess I didn't. Uh, I don't know if I, what was on, what made it on the recording, but Dolores had said, I think I liked the lighter green of her dress, especially with the light red wash showing. And what I was saying was, I do think it, you know, it's, I, 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 almost, I honestly I can't quite remember what it looked like back there, but, um, you know, if, if you were painting it and you wanted to keep it like that, by all means, I think that would be really cool. You know, I just wanted to sort of try to replicate as much of the painting as possible for anyone who, who really wants, who's tuning in for that. But, I think I just need to use a darker color to outline that. They just look like... There's that green is just sitting too much on the surface for my taste. Okay, let's blow dry this one more time. I could be, I, I, I could keep it like that though. Just blow dry that. And you know what? I feel like I want to muddy up the background a little bit. So, um, that's my dark glaze. I'm going to take this color. My brush is kind of dirty. So let's take that, rub it into this red. We don't need to go too far, right? We can just get this warm red. Just kind of add a 
that kind of and then just delicately kind of rub it with a, just a, a rag and this is just going to give me this quality I'm sort of simulating what he would have done is sort of painting and painting over lines and it's not really showing up on camera very well but kind of see as the, I get a bit of shadow on there I think that that's really kind of nice actually It just gives the painting a look of that there's, maybe let's see if I just, uh, I don't think that's going to do much. Um, it's just those simple little things like that that Like, he's obviously not concerned with perfection, right? Oh, well, I mean, I, it's obvious to me, but maybe it's worth just mentioning. But he's not... I think he likes a little bit of that handmade looseness in his painting. So that, I feel, is... I'm not sure how well that shows up on camera, but for me, that feels like that was a big step. Especially in the background, cleaning that up a little bit. I'm going to go over that finger there. Maybe even a bit of that hand. Very subtle. I'm going to blow dry that.
Ah! I forgot to turn the microphone back on. So I just wanted to... I'm going to glaze over top of this dog. With a cool yellow and some white. I think it's a cat, not a dog. I think. Remember I said I was going to go over a bit of this bird here to soften out some of the darker lines. So there I go. some of these lines now that I went back over top of it with that yellow. It's not quite as yellow as the original, but it's good enough for me and um, it's just slightly different color than anything else, so it just it looks like I've I've treated it differently and I have than other parts of the picture is a little bit more kind of got a bit of more of a cold yellow on there but
I mean, I could have made her nose a little bit longer now that I see them side by side. I've maybe made her face just a little bit rounder and like that. Like, if anything, she looks, in my picture, maybe a little bit younger than the woman on the left. You know, I don't know, debatable. But, uh... Okay. But I think... That makes me happy. I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. And I could go darker, but you know, I, I kind of, I'm, I'm, I, I, I think if I wanted to make it exactly the same, I would do another wash and just darken it. But I kind of want to preserve a little bit of that color that's, that's there. I like how that looks. Okay. today my goodness we've got our my wife put the Christmas tree up just the other day oh my goodness time is going by so fast like it is just crazy okay Thank you everyone for joining me this saturday we are going to be looking at your artwork so please take a photograph of the art that you've been working on maybe today's painting or something else you've been painting while i've been working on this painting upload it to the facebook group on saturday at 4 p.m pacific time we're going to take a look at them and i'm going to give you some congratulations and some feedback and you can do with it what you will a lot of people really appreciate that uh, or you can just tune in and watch because probably you'll learn something just by looking at other people's art and the comments I have on that. So feel free to join the Facebook group and participate in that. It, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for <laughs> this channel. And if you want to leave a contribution, there's a PayPal link down below. I appreciate any donation, large or small. That's how I bought the lights and the tables and the paintbrushes and all that kind of stuff. It's from your generosity. So thank you to all of those who've been supporting me continuously for almost two years. So thank you everyone for your generous support. If you want to send a check or e-transfer, there's my email on my website, or you can contact me through the Facebook group as well. Okay, everyone, enjoy the rest of your evening. We will see you guys on Saturday at 4 o'clock. Otherwise, um, it's been a blast, hasn't it? <laughs> and we'll see you again very, very soon. I like how this one turned out. There's more and more to come as we continue with all of these paintings. So we'll see you guys again soon. Good night.